three. Accepting on behalf of the Hellenic Olympic Committee, Spiros Kapralos. On behalf of the Brazilian Olympic Committee, Carlos Luzman. On behalf of the Chinese Olympic Committee, On behalf of the Korean yeah. Olympic Committee, Yang Chun Ha. <laughs> we wish all the athletes good luck when they... guys now then 12 months ago we had this man cycling around the velodrome on the olympic park with sir chris hoy i'm glad to say nothing as strenuous this evening but something equally important to reply on behalf of all of us please welcome the mayor of london boris johnson Mr. President, Mr. President, your, your Royal Highness, ladies and gentlemen, we have a new monument in this city to the indomitability of London, a symbol of resilience to go with Nelson's column or the dome of St. Paul's rising above the smoke of the Blitz. My friends, I give you the Olympic clock. No sooner, no sooner had this masterpiece of the Swiss chronometer's art been installed than it unexpectedly packed up. But with the help of various Swiss chronometers we got it going again, didn't we? And then and then it was attacked by a horde of hooded crusties protesting at something or other. And still that clock ticks on. To remind us, to remind us that nothing and no one is going to stop us in our work of preparing London for the greatest event that has taken place in this city in the last 50 years. Mr. President Rock, Mr. President Rock, the streets will be ready, won't they? The trains will be ready, the taxis will be ready, the theatres will be ready, the buses will be ready, complete with a new hop-on, hop-off feature. The hotels will be ready, the bicycles, the bicycles will be ready. 
The Olympic venues are already so ready that we might as well call a snap Olympics tomorrow and catch the rest of the world happy. And above all, and above all, the people of London will be ready. To welcome the world's finest athletes to the greatest games that have ever been held in the greatest city on earth. See you in London in 366 days time. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. I think we can take it from that that London will most definitely be ready. Well, that ends, and you can call it formal, the formal part of the evening. But it doesn't mean that we are finished. There's still plenty to come. There certainly is. We are going to see very shortly, for the first time, those medals, the London 2012 Olympic medals, that so many of these athletes here will be desperate to get their hands on next year. That's a very big moment. But first, let's go back to the Olympic Park because. It's time once again to make some history with Michelle Hussain. Michelle, over to you. Thank you, and welcome back. Welcome back to the Aquatic Centre. We are going to celebrate one year to go with the very first competitive race ever to take place in the Olympic pool. And who better to take part than those who know exactly what it is like to compete for Britain at an Olympic level. So, to introduce our swimmers, over now to Britain's Sydney 2000 triple jump gold medalist, Jonathan Edwards. And in lane seven, it is Jamie Bolsh. And last, but by no means least, is the one and only, Tessa Sardison. Are you ready for this race? Athletes, on your marks. Some of the dives there weren't quite as good as what we saw from Tom Daly, but as you would expect, look at Jamie Bolts actually, top of the screen there, keeping up with Mark Foster. Roger Black in lane one, there's the underwater shot of Mark Foster, showing us how it's done. But let's go back and see what's happening. Duncan Goodyear, of course, swimming breaststroke there. Mark Foster clearly, but let's see, we've got a battle on for second. Roger Black, Steve Blackley, Jamie Bolts all in the line, coming into the finish. Who's going to get it? Wow, I think we need a photo finish. Who knows who came in second there? As the rest of the swimmers come in, what an occasion. But there's no one in lane eight at the moment. Where's Tessa Sanderson? She's only halfway down the pool. The crowd are loving it. There she is, Tessa Sanderson. The crowd are on her feet now. She's, wow, well, almost there, almost there. The rest of the athletes are hauling themselves out, but Tessa's still stroking away. Come on, Tessa, keep your eyes on the prize. Get to the wall. She's almost there. Everyone standing ovation as she touches the wall. No world records today, but she made it. What a swim. So, we had the first competitive race in the pool. Let's have a big round of applause for all our Olympians. The box will be open and we will unveil the medals in just a moment. Of course, it's a medal that all the Olympic athletes would love to get their hands on, which gives them a chance to walk in the footsteps of those that have gone before them and create their very own Olympic memories. Well, Sophie, in this box are the medals. Uh, they're the things that the athletes at this very moment are dreaming about and striving for. I'm very proud that they're a British medal. They're designed by a Londoner. They're made at the Royal Mint in Wales. And I'm delighted to be able to ask Princess Royal to unveil them for us. Go on, Eddie. Dave! Get back to work! <laughs> Come 
don't know what they're now. <laughs> and suddenly it all seems very real, doesn't it? Those are the medals that will be fought for here in London in 2012. I know these athletes would love to get their hands on them. However, it's a year's wait and a lot of hard work before they get that opportunity. But I think the message from us here in London tonight is very clear. We will be ready and it will be a Games to remember. Just imagine exactly this time next year the Olympic Stadium will be packed. 80,000 people will be there for the opening ceremony which will be about to begin. The London Olympic Games are nearly here. Good night. Basically, I'm a gunshot survivor, not a cocaine dealer, as you, at university, Boris Johnson used to do cocaine to fill our students. I was always against cocaine dealing in my community.